any of our previous episodes you guys have heard me or any of my guests or sudhakar saying that pandemic has fast forwarded the digital transformation and digital transformation is the backbone of any company who wants to thrive in the next few years even decade or so so digital has become part and parcel of every business and good to note that the cxos and cdos are getting seat at the board of governors or getting seat at the main leadership table so given that there is a lot of emphasis on the digital do we know how to thrive as an employee in the digital world so today's guest on the show is someone who has over 12 years of work experience across various industries and sectors like media management consulting healthcare and pharma he is an experienced digital transformation leader with a demonstrated history of leading large scale transformational initiatives yielding multifold growth for businesses using digital and analytics someone who has worked his way up from a contract employee at one time to a cxo role right now quite an illustrious and inspiring journey and he is known for inventing smart ways of working through digital and it has been his forte all through his career hands on experience skilled in implementation and support of various technology driven initiatives with state of the art stakeholder management he has strong time management scope management and resource management skills he is a business process reengineering and transformation specialist also a recipient of 40 under 40 and indian achievers awardee in today's episode let's chat with tushar zade this is the guiding voice podcast series tgv for a better future this is your host navin samala and i'm a fellow it professional with a passion to learn and i'm on a mission to help fellow professionals across the globe and would like to reach millions and impact their careers and lives across the globe in every episode we interact with industry experts thought leaders or academicians or coaches to drive some insightful conversations that will help each one of you learn some amazing stuff also we share an interesting trivia or a fun fact towards the end and folks you know you'll acquire more knowledge for every minute by tuning into tgv than any other podcast in this space thank you so much for joining us and today we are going to discuss a topic disrupting businesses through digital and not only that how employees can thrive in the digital world and have a long lasting career we are pleased to have tushar part of tgv's journey in shaping the careers and lives of millions across the globe tushar welcome to tgv i'm super excited to have you thank you so much for having me navin i think uh, pleasure is all mine um, it has been i mean the show is wonderful and i keep on listening to all the podcasts um, i i feel great i feel honored that i have been invited this show i think thank you so much navin for support yeah pleasure having you on board and in fact um, uh, we are feeling honored as well all right so tushar let's kick off the conversation Uh, by sharing briefly about your career journey and emphasizing on the top 3 things that have helped you so far in your career sure sure man so i think uh, just to give you a little background if i was supposed to uh, mention myself in a one liner uh, i would say i'm a well organized uh, template driven data and a process guy who believes in taking smart decision and quick decisions for adding value to the organization whichever i work for okay now you you might wonder there are many adjectives i have used well throughout the podcast today i think i'll be covering all of these adjectives and i'll give you a glimpse of how i related to all these adjectives and how did we actually achieve uh, where actually i am right now so when i passed out it was a recession period um, i got placed in three companies and uh, to my very good luck none of them turned out all of them deferred the joinings so here i was i was just trying to get a job into a corporate world uh, i did not have a whenever i used to go for an interview it used to be a big rejection because they did not have open positions right because for freshers the world is very very cruel i must say um, then somehow times of india uh, a company called bennett colman struck me i got a contract position by the way this was uh, for 1.2 lakh rupees an annum which yielded around 8812 rupees at, at my hand and i used to live in mumbai of course you can imagine my first class local train pass was costing for 2000 rupees or something out of my 8000 i spent 2000 rupees in the local train pass itself right 
Uh, then what happened after after six months or so, uh, one of the company which which had deferred the joining came back to me saying that hey look you you were selected in your college do you want to come and uh, and uh, join us now? Then I had a choice to make whether to take a lucrative job of three point seven five lakh or four lakh rupees an annum or continue with what I am doing today, which was around one point two lakhs an annum, right? And then but then I, there was a there was a caveat if I join that company. They they would treat me as a fresher, and uh, they will give me whatever they want. They can put me into Java, they can put me into development, into testing, whatever they want. I am at their mercy. Uh, but then I chose that. Okay, uh, let me take a step back. Let me see what I want to do. I don't want to be at anyone's mercy. I want to do something for myself. I choose my own career. I stayed back, and trust me, one point two lakh rupees seemed uh, like very very small amount at that point of time versus a four point five lakh, three point seven five four lakh. Rupees salary. Then, after a couple of months, um, the same group, the same Times of India group, offered me a permanent job from a contract position to now a permanent job for four point eight five lakh rupees a month. That uh, a year, sorry, at that particular period, and I was like, I was astonished that one decision, that perseverance, that consistency which I took, had actually helped me to achieve much bigger milestone than what I intended to do earlier, right? So that that was that was a very uh, key turning point in my career where I chose something which no one else would have, and I and I actually made success out of it. Then I moved on, uh, learned of things in Times of India around SAP, and uh, moved to Deloitte. Now Deloitte Consulting, you know, I was I was a management consultant there. Uh, multiple clients, including pharma, non pharma, uh, automobile, media. Like I worked with suppliers of the world, Tata Skies of the world, Microwings, etc. So many clients I had. I was doing management consulting. I was giving them a gyan that hey, look, if you want to work, if you want to improvise your process, uh, if you want to increase your revenue, this is the way you need to do. Right, and then they will take care of the execution. My job was to give them gyan. That's it. Right? Um, slowly, then I moved to a smaller company after that called Invenue Business Solutions. This was again my jump towards little on the SAP project management side. Uh, it was it was a small stint. Uh, but then I got an offer to work with Dr. Reddy's uh, way back in 2014, I guess, right? So in 14, I joined as a project manager in Dr. Reddy's. Worked in sales and marketing, digital initiatives. Did some CRM, CLM implementations for them. Um, after that, I moved to a project called Global Serialization. Now, again, I'll not go into details of it and how it is and all. It was a program management kind of a role. Um, then again, after two two and a half years, I moved to SAP back. And this particular time, I was I was program managing the SAP S4 HANA upgrade for the company. So you can imagine within the six seven years time frame within Dr. Reddy's, I changed three roles. Uh, both are I mean all three of them are not related to each other at all. I just it just happened to me that I got to learn something new every time in every every option of my career. Right? Then somehow uh, then I landed up in in my current role, which is Origin Pharmaceutical Services Limited. Uh, I'm a I'm quite young in the in the board here, so I am part of the leadership council here. Uh, I'm quite young in the leadership council. I'm perhaps the youngest one. So again, this is one more turning point in my life. Between Dr. Reddy's and Deloitte, I also had a startup. Um, that startup experience gave me that entrepreneurial um, mindset, rather, right? Wherein I was I I started from looking for office, understanding that how to register a company, how to get your people on board. Uh, what all things will work? What all things did not work? All of that, I started understanding the whole business aspect of it. Because of some family reasons, I couldn't take it forward after that. But then, had I been uh, doing the startup, probably I would have I would have been some different level altogether. But then, okay, that's the way the career grows. And I think I'm happy with whatever I have done so far, uh, reaching to a C-suit level in like in a decade long experience hel- helps helped me a lot. Uh, to to get all those recognitions, what you had mentioned in the beginning. Uh, well, I think uh, these are the top three turning points in my career. One was letting down the other offer uh, and taking up the smaller salary package. Second was my entrepreneurial strength, which actually helped me to understand how entrepreneurs are. And uh, third is around the leadership role, what I am right now doing. Uh, from a things, what has worked for me to come to here uh, is like I think three important things. One is we should always dream big, right? Your dreams should be to reach the sky. Okay, it it you may end up reaching Burj Khalifa. Okay, no problem. But at least you should aim for the sky. Second important thing is never say no attitude. 
I mean, I remember I was a project manager, a senior project manager in Dr. Reddy's, and uh, there was there was a training for 500 people, and I was asked to take printouts using a local printer and uh, staple those five pages, multiply by 500 copies. And uh, me and one of my junior, we put all the papers, went around, uh, stapled all of them, given to the uh, given to the people, and all. So I I never had an uh, had a hesitation that hey, this work is small for me, or I should not do this work, right? It always was never said, ne never said. Third thing, moving on. The third thing, I think we should all nurture our relationships uh, in terms of whatever we have been past so far, uh, whatever I have been through in my journey so far. All of these relationships were nurtured very well. Um, all my peers, I'm still in touch. My ex bosses, I'm still in touch with. The colleagues of my ex bosses, I'm still in touch with. Because the world is very small. You never know where you'll bump into some some of your old colleagues, right? So you should always nurture relationships. So these are the top three things which actually help me. Uh, there are other secondary aspects also. Uh, like I told you, the perseverance and the consistency, which has helped. Of course, that is important. Another thing is we should continue to take feedback and improvise. That is something which has, which is as an as a young entrepreneur or a young leader should always continue to do so. And finally, believe in yourself. You should always think that yeah, you rule the world. And you trust yourself, you'll be able to reach there where you want to be. Fantastic. Very inspirational and passionate story. Tushar, I think um, you spoke about the entrepreneurial stint as well as how you grew up yourself into the C-suite. I'm really interested to learn about your childhood. Like, Just to understand, were you a bright student in academics or uh, you enjoyed spending time outside the classroom? So I think uh, before I go to my childhood, I'll, I'll quickly narrate a small story. Uh, and then we will we will try to come to my childhood. Okay. Now I am telling a story about a boy. Okay, who who was a very young kid and and was handicapped. Okay. Now when I say handicapped, not that he is amputated or something, but he had a problem of stammering. Then when he used to go to any place, he couldn't speak. He always used to stammer. Like if he is supposed to talk in front of his teacher in in school, he would say hey. T -t 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 -t. He would not complete teacher as a word because. He could not, he had a stammering problem, right? Even he could not pronounce his own name. Um, even if, if there was a phone call at home, at that point of time, there were not the normal receivers. He will answer, he wouldn't answer the call, thinking that, hey, he'll stammer again and someone will laugh. He was bullied all across his, his childhood. He never had friends. Uh, I think I only, I, I remember that guy had only two friends throughout the, uh, throughout the journey. Then all of a sudden, I mean, till 10 standard, 11 standard, that that person was, stammering and had this problem every time couldn't talk was underconfident his uh, his sister took him to a speech therapist wherein uh, it was a traumatic situation for him because it was considered it was made him actually that position that situation made him think that he is a handicap and that actually demoralized him a lot then then i remember this guy spending hours together to unlearn and to relearn all the alphabets of English language and other languages, all the words with wherever he had problems, he would replace difficult words with some simpler words. He would prepare a script every night, practice it in front of the mirror, go next day to his school and talk the same. And if at all that question coming to him is not in his script, he won't answer because he has not prepared for it. Right? Slowly, steadily, he started building confidence and try to overcome his stammering habit, right? So now that person, I think I did not leave any guesses anymore. That person is me. I I had so I I had this problem, and when I was a kid, I was not able to talk. Um, I mean, my sisters also will will take a lot of pride when I say this that I had this problem and I have overcome it all these years. And today I am in standing in front of you and talking. Um, without much of a hesitation and without much of a stammering. So I think this is an achievement for me. Each time I go and talk at any place, Naveen, trust me, I am challenging myself, I am proving myself. Because I had a problem in my past and my friends bullied me, this is an answer to all of them. And this is an answer to prove myself that, hey, look, I'm a normal person and I can talk as good as you guys. So that was my childhood all about me. Oh my God. Such a mind-blowing and inspirational story and again goes back with your perseverance right whatever you spoke about the yeah and continuous improvement as well wonderful i think uh, yeah it, it, it's giving me goosebumps 
Wonderful. So now let's talk about the core of today's conversation, okay, about the digital, right? Of course, we have seen a lot of articles in terms of, hey, you know, digital has become the center at the board table. And also everybody is investing a lot in the digital initiatives, so on and so forth. But can you explain in simple terms so that any layman can understand how is digital helping businesses thrive in this disruptive economy? Absolutely. So I think uh, this is the core agenda for today. So um, Naveen, so what happens is maybe I'll take a step back for everyone to understand this. And I know um, I would look at it since it is going to be a podcast, people will listen to it, not only from IT, but also from beyond IT. So let's, let's try to, let's take a step back and understand what kind of businesses we all are in. Uh, in the world, on the globe, there are two basic kinds of industries, right? One is called as a product-based organizations. Another one is called as a service-based organization. Right? And there's a third category, which is which does both product and service. Now, when I say product, maybe laptops, the, the people who manufacture the laptop, maybe people who produce bread or um, any product, right? Service. Now, on the service side, uh, maybe an Accenture's of the world, IBM's of the world, when they come and implement uh, SAP for an application, for a, for a company, right? Or they, they implement SharePoint. All these are service-based organizations. Then the third one, like ADPs of the world, which are which have their own product and they also service that product, right? or even SAP for that matter. They have their own product and they service that product. Right? So broad, these are the two demarcations of, uh, of the industries, whatever we are working. I'll take an example of maybe Domino's Pizza. Okay. Now let's see if, if at all I am the CEO of Domino's Pizza. My business is divided into an entire value chain of eight levels or eight steps, right? First one is marketing. I will come up with this marketing campaigns like, uh, suppose, Pizza Mania, Tuesday Delight, or whatever, XYZ. Right? Then I will lure the customers. I get orders from them. Right? This is the second one. Third one, I procure the raw material, which is nothing but the bread, uh, cheese, paneer, vegetables, chicken, all those stuff. I will make it inventory. I just keep it in my stores. Right? Finally, then I will manufacture or I will produce that. I will take a pizza base. I'll put toppings, I'll put cheese, I'll put it in the oven, it will heat and finally the final outcome is there. The pizza is there, I'll go in and sell it to the customer. My accounts will get tallied, hey, I have managed to sell five pizzas and these are the this is the final value what I got. And there are people who are doing this entire thing. Right? So these are eight steps in the entire process. Now, if I imagine if I tell you that, okay, you have a register in your store, you have to write each and every customer's name, his mobile number, then get his order and then uh, go to a vendor, call the vendor, send him a letter that, hey, I want so, so many breads and all, uh, manufacture it and then finally sell it and not no record in a system. Everything is in a register. Will it be possible? I don't think so. Right. So this is where digital is coming in and it is changing and helping businesses drastically. Now, imagine right from the marketing campaign, what, what Domino's has started with. I mean, you can imagine if I am if I'm a person sitting in Delhi, the menu what I will see on Diamond Domino's will be a little different than a person sitting in Chennai because the, the palette is different. People's preferences are different, right? How it is governed? It is governed by some data that, hey, look, this sort of a demography, people like so and so kind of a pizza. This sort of a demography, people like so and so sort of a pizza. Everything is digital and everything is analytics some way or the other, right? Now, booking the order. Order booking like a register, impossible, not, not going to fly. Everything will go into one common system, right? Procuring something again into a system, then manufacturing it again into a system, selling it again into a system. So you can imagine that there's digital in each and every step of the business. It is growing every, every day it is growing, right? If I, if I look at it, I think, uh, the overall digital landscape for any company, okay, be it my own company or be it any company is divided into three buckets. One is to get the new customers or increase the market share where suppose again i'm dominoes if i want to increase my market share i would see what pizza hut is selling or i, I will see how many people are going to pizza hut and why they are going there right? then second is how do i make my customers come back to me again and again that is the customer stickiness and finally on the productivity pass part now productivity can be efficiency can be improving the way you do your processes to it right so if I, if, I, if I categorize this into three buckets, you can see digital playing role in each of the three buckets, right? 
Now I'll come back to the healthcare space so that I'll relate it to what I do and everyone will understand that what does a CIO, CDO is all about. So in healthcare space, again, you can imagine marketing remain the same. You market pizzas in Domino's, you market medicines or products in, in a pharma space. You get orders from your customers. It can be a retailer, it can be a wholesaler, it can be even a hospital. Then you procure raw material like chemicals, um, APIs, excipients, and all this stuff. You inventorize them. After that, you plan them for manufacturing, you manufacture them, you sell it to the customer, you tally your accounts, and you have people to manage. So the entire value chain is driven by some or the other digital initiatives across the company. Right. So I think this is this is the overall uh, way how companies are now changing. When I say uh, the disruptive part of the of the business, I think largely from a disruption when it when do you hit hit the, the, the disruption epitome is where you have data and you have machines to do your work you don't need to do you don't need people to do it people are only there to handle exceptions there are business rules defined in the system based on the previous data system takes the decision system actually does it in the in the overall process only exceptions is where people are supposed to uh, come and they are supposed to uh, take decisions on a human human level right so at a cio organization level or a cdo organization level i think it is also important to understand like i mentioned those eight eight steps in the whole value chain we have we call them as verticals marketing is a vertical uh, bd or the business development or pre sales sales is a vertical then quality is a vertical production is a vertical like that there are multiple verticals we have leaders for all of them in the digital space. Someone is leading the marketing, someone is from digital, from my team side, right? Someone is leading the BD, someone is leading quality. Then there are horizontals. Like suppose everyone uses a laptop and of course, uh, we at um, my company, since I am the CIO, CDO, all the laptops, desktops are governed by, by my team. Right? Then we use SAP. Again, it's a common platform for everyone. So horizontal. We have information security. Again, it's a horizontal. Then beyond all this, beyond all this, I think there is one important thing, the digital analytics uh, pinnacle. So imagine you are generating data for all the verticals and all the horizontals. What do you do with this data? This is like data tsunami coming in. Once you put all of that into a data lake and try to take insights out of it, do data science and try to take insights out of it, that is where you are actually trying to give back to the organization by generating value. Right? So that is the full uh, disruption what I'm talking about. And how digital is helping fantastic yeah i think that was very well explained uh, let's talk about your role as a cio slash cdo how does uh, a day in your life look like and look looks like it is uh, intensive job right in terms of uh, managing the time and the priorities and how do you manage your time and priorities yeah so i think a very good question for people who don't understand this whole cio cdo stuff uh well <clears throat> In a company, I think there is only one CEO, one CFO, one CIO. Right? So what CIO means is Chief Information Officer. CDO means Chief Digital Officer. So whatever IT and whatever digital needs of the companies are, are, are managed by this particular organization within the company. Right? So, so I am uh, I would also like to rephrase CIO as Chief Innovation Officer. He is the one person who is also responsible for innovations in the company. Right? So a day in the life of a CIO, I think this divided into five basic levels, I would say, right? Five, five basic steps. Again, I would give 20% weightage to all of them. Okay. 20% each, 100% in a day. So CIO's may, primary job is to look outside in. Now he has to read what is happening in the world. What is the, what are the new, uh, what are other companies doing, right? He should have the outside in approach. What is my competition doing? What is other companies in the other industry doing? Suppose FMCG is doing extremely good in supply chain. So how can I learn from them and adopt into my own organization? That is something that outside in approach is where I should be updated about. Uh, second is about the stakeholder management. Now it's extremely important because stakeholders are internal and external both for at, at this particular role. So I have to make sure that the board understands what projects we do, how they are helping the company, how we are growing, how digital is actually creating a, a growth trajectory and we are, we are staying ahead of the curve. Right? That, that stakeholder management piece is equally important. Third is around governance. So governance, when I say it's all about, we do a lot of projects right in the company, uh, making sure that the projects are completing on time. There is, there is a proper uh, governance structure, there's a steering committee is happening, making sure that 
all the projects are hitting the timelines and not exceeding because it's a cost involved. So whole governance piece is also important for a CIO. Uh, fourth, and one of the important things is, is to innovate. He should have that innovative vision of, of, of taking risks, doing something out of the box, which was never done in the past. You may succeed or you may fail, be it. But at least you should have the appetite, a risk appetite to innovate. And finally, I think most important thing for all the leaders is to build the next level of leadership. What will happen if the CIO of any company goes off? Business has to go on, right? So the next level should also be able to pick it up and take it to the next level without too much of a hush push. I think these are the top five things what every CIO go through. And uh, I know the priority perspective, Naveen. So priorities, I think there are three important priorities which all the CIOs today uh, are going through. We are looking forward to picking up high business impact projects first. Right? A project which is doing maybe having a smaller impact, we may choose later. So the conversations in the boardroom have changed drastically. Now the CEOs are asking that, hey, I'll give you $1 million. Can you give me 100 million back with that initiative? These questions are coming in the uh, boardroom. So it's all about the return on investment. It's all about the business impact. Second, uh, priority wise, again, that we should all, all have an eye for the new tech. What is disrupting the space? Like how AI is disrupting the whole R&D space today. Right? All that is equally important uh, to as a priority for a CIO. Finally, looking after the people. Now people can be my own teams, my peers, my peers' teams, everyone, because everyone is impacted through digital tsunami. So all the three uh, areas, digital and the priorities are set for a CI. Excellent, Tushar. Very insightful. Now let's talk about how you have crafted your career. Like what's the secret behind reaching the CIO or CDO level at such a young age and making an entry into c -Sword? Can you share what are the traits that uh, the young employee should imbibe in order to aspire to become a successful leader like you? Absolutely. So I think let me divide this question into two parts. Huh? So I keep on getting this question multiple times that I'm an engineer. Uh, I want to do big in my life. Shall I do an MBA? Shall I go for MS or shall I do MTech? Um, what should be my career path? Right? So I will first of all, let's talk about the youth, what they should do. And then we'll talk about someone who's already in the corporate, how we can make up the ladder, right? So first part for the, for the career path of most of the youth today, I think first thing uh, I would suggest personally that complete your education, like do a postgraduate program, then only you come into the, into the corporate. I'll tell you an example. If, if you join in as an engineer, you will start as a developer. If you join in as a software engineer, you'll start in as a developer or you will start as a tester or a quality guy, right? But if you choose an MBA and then you join, maybe you will join at the management side. Probably you will join as a project manager or you will join as a product manager or you will join as a BA, right? So industry, uh, I mean, to me, my team, I don't have engineers. I have all the MBAs. I don't have MTech people in my team. Everyone is a management B school grad. And I'm, it doesn't mean that I'm discouraging to do MTech or uh, MS. Of course, it also there are also different tracks in them. But then I would suggest personally to do a proper planning of your career. If you want to do research or you want to go into teaching, then MTech ME is the right direction because then you can go ahead and you can do a PhD after that and get into teaching profession. Right? If you want to do MS, that is also good. I have seen many people, especially here in Hyderabad and Telangana, a lot of people aspire to go to US, study there, but then it's a one-way ticket for most of them. I mean, people don't come back. <laughs> And uh, that is something actually most of us think that, okay, which is a good option, uh, good life and everything. But then at the end of the day, you are, your parents stay back here and uh, there's no one to take care of them equally. So, so wise decision. Um, thirdly, I think uh, it is important for, for everyone to understand that what role they want to play in each of the company. And, okay. If at all you are, if you're a software engineer, there are 10,000 people like you in the Infosys and a TCS or maybe IBM. But if you are a management grad and you have a niche skill, uh, maybe say if you, if you know data analytics, which is not that popular, which is not that famous as of now that everyone wants to do it. But if you have a specific area of interest, I think there is some space for you uh, to go ahead as a, as a pressure or as, as a youth is what I'm trying to say. If you're working, now I go to the next part of, it, of the story. If you're already working, if you're working in a company, you are one or two years experienced in some IT firm, I think it's, it's point. Uh, there's a point that you can 
go and take a look at your career path for last one or two years and aspire expand it and in an exponential way and see whether you will be able to reach the top in the same path or not right then introspect try to see whether you can give a cat kind of an exam or do a part time mba or do a executive mba okay the options are all open for you even a part time mba also gives you benefit it's not like that that no one accepts part time mba they do executive mba also people are accepting that always those options are available for a working professional right but now if you want to go up the ladder i think there is no clear cut success mantra navin and to all your listeners also i like to tell that there is no clear cut path that i go with this path i reach there maybe or may not right so i think from a uh, overall industry perspective what i did was i have put together a framework for for your listeners to understand uh, i call this framework as putra p u t r a putra okay so what does putra stand for is p is focus on your presentation skills now when i say presentation i don't mean ppt i don't mean powerpoint i mean presentability the way you are representing your work is extremely important people today's world some of them don't have that that skill i think it's time for all of us to imbibe that skill and to learn that skill so that we'll be able to present our work and go to the higher levels next is i think keep yourself updated always now there are lot of new streams opening up like data science ai ml dl is there rpa is there digital twin is there adaptive manufacturing 3d printing vr ar lot of stuff is happening right so keep yourself updated of what is happening in the industry third t first one was presentation p you was keep yourself updated t is be a team player there are no individual gladiators in the corporate world there are no single heroes it's a team work everyone in the team is designated with some work they need to complete that work and work as a team right for this be ready always there will be an opportunity coming your way please be ready okay it's it's not that okay today i am on a weekend probably i'll take it up from monday onwards no be ready any time of the day any time of the week any time of the year you will get some opportunity be ready to grasp it and finally be ready to take additional responsibilities over and above what you do so never say no again i'm coming back to the same one so putra p u t r a p is focus on presentation that is a p u u is keep on keep yourself updated always with the new tech t t is where you be a team player uh, there are no individual gladiators r is be ready always a is nothing but b uh, be ready to take additional responsibilities in, uh, in my career navin i i have followed the whole putra framework to the t i have completed i mean i i follow it every day but i have i have a very uh, unique i not say ability but i i like being a generalist in the industry there are people who prefer being a specialist and then go up the ladder and then become a ceo i on the other hand have always been a generalist like you know you have, you know my career now i have always played different roles one side sales and marketing other side supply chain other side uh, something on the quality space so i have been across i have been a generalist so i generally idealize the way elon musk works he is an expert generalist right he has stake he is ceo of spacex neuralink solar city the boring company all of these are different kinds of businesses there is no relation as such right so he is a expert generalist so i think he, uh, for me it helped me when i interviewed for this role it helped me for my previous tenure everyone actually appreciated that this guy at a young age has done multiple stuff as a generalist right that helped me in a way but again there are industry debates i would leave that debates as it is i prefer being a generalist people can choose their own way it reminded me one of the episodes that we have done in the past with a cio who spoke about should you be a generalist or a specialist to grow in fact he has also chosen to be a generalist and uh, i'm i'm also at various different roles okay starting from java programmer and then project management pmo operational excellence automation business objects data analytics vmo likewise right so it, it gives us a gamut of exposure and i loved your putra framework very insightful p u t r a very nice so <laughs> great great to see this kind of uh, energy levels which is uh, infectious in in fact and uh, tushar what keeps you moving <laughs> okay so what keeps me moving um, i think uh, it's interesting one is um, i'm a problem solver okay i give me a business problem i would sit on it hours together and i'll try to eliminate the waste 
or uh, simplify the process, digitize it, automate it, whatever possible. So I'm a problem solver. Give me a problem. I, I like problem solving. That motivates me. That keeps me moving. Uh, second is I like challenges. Throw me some challenges and I'll be able to come out of it. Any challenge, be it for personal, professional, uh, I love it. Um, third is I love the whole leadership role, what I what I get to play. I think uh, I was hearing to Simon, Simon once, and he also he mentioned that leaders aren't in charge. They are responsible for the people in their charge, right? So the leadership is is extremely important role because you are not supposed to do yourself anything. There are people who are doing, but it is your duty to make sure that your people are taken care of, right? In terms of their COVID situation, in terms of their health condition, their salaries, everything. Right? Your people should be taken care of, right? That is extremely important. Fourth is uh, I have a bucket list of my own, right? So I my bucket list is very wild, and uh, I would say uh, we, before I die, I'll complete all of this. I'm sure. So my bucket list has experiences like learning horse riding becoming a DJ, becoming RJ, photography, bungee jumping, all those things are there in my bucket list. And trust me, most of them I'm leaving it, I've done it. Like horse riding, I'm pro now. I can I can ride it, I can ride horses, I can do a lot of stuff with the horses as well. So the, that bucket list is something which keeps me moving always, motivated and moving. This is around music. We, we had a brief interaction earlier, uh, I So music is extremely important to me. I, I love music, any genre, any form. Any language, no problem. Uh, I play, I play a dhol. A dhol is a big instrument, like a drum. Um, and uh, in, here in Hyderabad, we have a troop for, of people from Maharashtra. Okay, they play this big dhol for Ganpati. So I play dhol a lot. I mean, I love and I enjoy playing dhol. Uh, I play guitar. I am a, I'm a certified. I'm a trained RJ. I'm a trained uh, DJ as well. So music is is there in in me all across. So I think these are the five things uh, which keeps me quite fascinating. All right. So uh, this, this is a very charged up conversation and uh, it's going great so far, but I would like to add some spice to the episode so that uh, our listeners get to know the other side of Tushar. Okay. If you're okay, I'm going to kick off a quick rapid fire round. Sure. So am I going to get some hamper after this or not? Absolutely. You are. <laughs> All, right, let's do it. All right. So yeah, let me kick off the very first uh, question out of the rapid fire. Who was your childhood hero, Tushar? So my childhood hero was Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Um, I am a Maratha and I come from the Maratha dynasty. I and mean, somewhere I'm related to Shivaji Maharaj stuff. So I always admired the way he has brought up his own army. And made sure that that all the entire Maharashtra and not only Maharashtra, the entire India was colored with all with the Maratha flag all across. So Shivaji Maharaj was my childhood hero. Awesome. Yeah. In fact, he is the real hero. Let me move to the next question. What would you do if you win a $1 billion lottery? I would become India's Elon Musk. Like I told I'm an expert journalist. So I would become India's Elon Musk shortly. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations in advance and wish you all the very best. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Let me move on to my next question. What is one random skill that you would like, you would like to learn? Of course, after knowing the fact that you are a DJ, RJ, bungee jumping and you're horse riding pro, musician and all. Is there anything else that is left out? I, I think, yeah. One, one important thing which is left out is to fly an aircraft. I want to fly an aircraft, uh, maybe a fighter aircraft for that matter. I know which which one I want to fly, F-35. So uh, that is my ultimate skill I want to achieve, a random skill to fly. Great, great thoughts actually. Yeah. Now let me move on to my next one. What was your childhood fantasy, Ishar? Oh, childhood fantasy? I think like I told you, my childhood hero was uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. I, when I was a kid, I used to listen about his stories from my elderly, from my parents and others. And I always used to think that I'm the next Shivaji for the, for the world. And I will be, <laughs> I'll conquer the entire Mara, Maratha empire again and make sure that everyone is together in the same family. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. Very interesting rapid fire. And uh, let me fire the last bullet out of this. So Tushar, what is one electronic gadget that you'd like to see or invent yourself? Okay, so I think I would like to invent a teletransportation pod. This will help me to deliver food, water, clothes to the needy, medicines to the needy. Uh, as of now, many people in the in the country are are deprived of basic stuff, 
So this teleportation pod, I really want to invent and make sure that no one in this country sleeps starving. Awesome. Such a noble intent, actually. I wish your dream will come true someday. All right. So this has been a fabulous uh, rapid fire. With that, let me flip back to the mainstream and ask you one final question for today's conversation. So Dushar, what will be your one piece of advice to those aspiring to make big in their careers? So I think, uh, I mean, it's extremely important again to understand uh, one more framework, what I always followed throughout my life. I called it as DHA. Now there is no meaning to DHA as such, like I had Putra, but DHA, there is no meaning as such. So DHA is nothing but dream, hustle, and achieve. If you have a big dream, you hustle big and you achieve big. If you dream small, you will hustle small and you will achieve small, right? So dream big, aim for the sky, love your dreams, follow your passion, watch dreams with open eyes. Don't close your eyes. If you sleep and you're dreaming, not the dream. Watch dream with your open eyes. That is the actual big dream what you will, what you have. Hustle, be ready for working hard. Try to unlearn and learn. Improvise and course correct as you are moving ahead the journey. Uh, practice as much as possible. Maintain your integrity, maintain your respect, your dignity, always, right? And achieve. Never forget those who have actually helped you to reach there where you are. Uh, thank Almighty, thank the God. And again, start the cycle again. Dream bigger this time. So you already always have a DHA in place. Quite interesting perspective. And uh, again, a very enriching conversation so far. And thank you so much for joining us today, Tushar. It has been fabulous speaking to you. And I'm really energized after this conversation and I'm sure all the listeners, especially the youngsters who are aspiring to make big like you would get nuances of motivation from you for sure. Yeah. Last thing, Naveen, I think uh, I have one key takeaway for all your listeners today mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. that once they, uh, once they listen to this particular podcast, or uh, they look at the video, I think after this, they should question themselves, right? That someone like Tushar, who was once a handicapped can come here and get called by Naveen on TGV, can come here and do something, right? So even they can do. If I can do, anyone can do. Because trust me, it has been a difficult journey for me so far. But I'm sure if I can do, anyone can do. Fantastic. Again, thank you for the last tip as well. Wonderful. So with that... I have a surprise, by the way. Oh, is it? What was that? Are you going to give me a hamper? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I really wish I could. <laughs> but this this hamper is a little different. Uh-huh, this is a uh-huh. musical hamper. Oh, okay. Wow. So maybe um, I'll I'll sing a couple of lines for you. So that for you and the listeners, so that they get motivated. And if Tushar can do, anyone can do. Absolutely. And I think uh, this is the first time someone is giving a surprise to me on TGV. I really look forward to it. <laughs> sure, absolutely. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the stage is all yours. Superb, superb, mind blowing. All right, and thank you. I loved, I loved the surprise, and definitely I'm going to send you a hamper. <laughs> awesome, you, awesome, to share. I think uh, you are uh, one such unique personality that I have interviewed so far. So many dimensions, like multi-talented professional, and really energized. And thank you, thank you so much again for being part of TGV. I'm super impressed. Thank you, thank you so much, Ravi, for having me, and uh, thank you so much for making this happen. 
Yeah. Um, I really look forward uh, for connecting with you again sometime maybe offline also it's okay no problem Absolutely look forward look forward for more interactions as well we can plan more sessions and I'm sure our TGV audience would love to have you back again and again <laughs> All right so folks I think uh, we had uh, such a energetic conversation about digital how digital is uh, disrupting the businesses and how somebody as a young employee can thrive in this digital world to scale up to the c suite from tushar and i would like to seek your inputs as well who are the leaders that you look up to and which organizations have done so well during this pandemic and especially embracing the digital to be able to solve their customers problems so feel free to reach out to me on social media or in case if you are watching it on youtube please leave a comment i'm going to read them and acknowledge in future sessions so before we move into the trivia section here is another request in case if you haven't subscribed to us please subscribe from the app where you have tuned in from so that you'll be notified of all the future episodes and also if you have loved this episode and found it useful please share with your friends or colleagues who can benefit from tgv so that your friends will learn new stuff just like you and we'll gain new subscribers thank you so much in advance now let's cruise into the trivia segment of today's episode folks today's trivia is about getting an entry into guinness record or making an entry into guinness record in case if you want to be listed or to be part of guinness record here is a chance to make a perfect pint of guinness you can pour it at an inclination of 45 degrees for about 119.5 seconds precisely and you will make it wish you all the best that's all for today thank you so much for tuning in this is navin your fellow it professional and on a mission to make a difference in the lives and careers of millions across the globe until next time bye bye